Bye bye, Mum. Hello and welcome to Made by Mum. Do excuse the um, yeah, <laughs> the funkiness. I've been on the school run and it's been raining and it is still raining. <laughs> um, it has been. A long time since I have last recorded and said hello to you guys. I do apologise. It has been a very, very busy month. I will explain at the end of the video. <laughs> but first, I want to introduce my new little friend. Now, this is Hetty, and Hetty is a hippo. <laughs> my dad found it, and I had to get it. It's so cute. So, we have got a little Hetty hippo, and she's going to sit here. And I, I think in next videos to come I'll place her around the room somewhere see if you can find her <laughs> some fun was <laughs> whilst we record right I have got some finished objects I've got lots and lots of whips <laughs> and I have got lots and lots of yarn <laughs> so I'm gonna start with my finished objects because I have got one and a half you'll see why it's half in a second so the first one is a Grello blanket that I have made for a, a work friend who has just found out she's going to have a baby. So I made this gorgeous blanket and I followed the Jada in Stitches pattern. I will put links to all patterns that have a pattern. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description box below. So I got this gorgeous baby blanket finished and that is going to get gifted as soon as I've got it washed and dried <laughs> and the washing instructions on a label so they know how to wash and dry it so there's my first finished object my second finished object has been really put through its paces or kind of finished object it's been living in my uh, Pinocchio bag now, the colour of the yarn might look familiar. Now, this yarn has been on such a journey. It has been made into three different cardigans. And one of those cardigans was done twice. Because it was the wrong size. So, this is finally the cardigan for my granddad for Christmas. This is the Jade, no it's not, it's the Crystal of Bagode. It is her, one of her patterns, I will put a link in the description. I haven't put buttons on yet, I do need to still do that. But this is in, what size did I do this? Now it's been, it's been like this for a little while, I just haven't put the buttons on yet because I don't know what kind of buttons to put with it. <laughs> I think I used a 6mm hook with iron weight yarn but the first time I did it I did it with a five mil a meter hook so I had to pull and restart and of course the first one we did we tried doing with this yarn was the Berkeley cardigan which was knitted then I did then I started a cabled cardigan and my numbers just weren't right <laughs> I couldn't get it right so I got frustrated and pulled it and I decided right I'm just gonna do a nice simple warm cardigan and I followed Crystal from ba Bag Day. so I will put a link in the description for that cardigan and I only had whoop, this tiny ball left out of how many have we got one two three four I have four ball bands here but that was four that weren't used I also ripped the cable cardigan I was doing I ripped that out and that was about another four balls and there were 100 gram balls and 200 meters per ball so a lot a lot of love's gone into this cardigan <laughs> So there's my ball bands. I am saving to find out how much I use in a year. That year is nearly up and my bag is rather full. <laughs> so that's going to go back in here. 
So it's only half a project, uh, half a finished project, because I haven't got the buttons on yet. And I need to put the buttons on, otherwise it won't stay fastened to my granddad. So there's that. But before I finished this one, I started another project, which is still a whip. And part of that is living in whoop, yet another bag. Only this one's Daffy Duck. Oh, I've actually got two projects in this bag. <laughs> Let's pull this one out and put the bag back at my feet. There it is. The rest of this project is actually living in here. So, this is a cardigan for my grandma. And now I have got the back panel and the two front panels finished. I am working on one of the sleeves. I will put a link in the description box for the pattern. Now, to me, this sits just on the top of my waist. Well, just below my waist, just at the top of my butt. And my gran is a little bit taller than I am. So I'm going to modify this pattern a little bit. And I'm going to put some ribbon on the bottom as a cuff. And I'm also going to do it on the end of the sleeves. Because my grandma is quite a tall lady, but quite a slim lady. So this is it so far. I am working on the sleeve. And I have got that much done. <laughs> now, I think it starts at the top and you work your way down because I am actually decreasing. So I've still got a fair way to go down my arm and my grand's arms are longer than mine. But we're getting there, slowly but surely. I haven't worked on it in a little bit, but I've got time because it's for Christmas. So there's that cardigan. I am using Drifter yarn, which is Kinko Drifter Aran. And it is the colourway Pyrenees. And it is a gorgeous pink and green, which are my grandma's two favourite colours. So something, again, nice and warm for her to wear in the colder weather or in the colder months. I'm trying to put my label back. <laughs> so there's that. I did have to order some more balls of this because I didn't think I had enough. I have, or I had four, and I've just ordered another four, which I have got. I got them all a while ago. I think I showed them. If not, I will show them again. I also got a Tunisian crochet hook, which I will show if I have not already shown. So there's that. I don't know what the name of the cardigan is. I just saw a pretty pattern and went, I'll, put, I'll do that one. <laughs> I found it on Pinterest, but I will put a link in the description box below. So there's that one. And then again, the second project in the Daffy Duck bag is again, Drifty Yarn. And I do have another ball in here. I've got another one, two, three. I've got another four balls of it over on my sh shelves. But I'm working through my Drifter yarn. And this is the colourway Rockies. It is an iron weight yarn. They are 79% premium acrylic, 17% cotton, 4% wool. Approximately 218 yards, 200 metres. Um, you can wash on a 40 degree wash. Do not iron, do not bleach. Uh, you can... Dry clean and cool tumble dry. It's so pretty and it is so soft, this yarn, guys. It's amazing. So I started this. <laughs> it's actually going to be like a kimono cardigan type kind of thing. So you do one side, then you do the other, then you seam it down the back, and then I'm going to add some little sleeves onto it if I have enough yarn. Or was I in the process of pulling that? No, that's that's not it. That's what I'm pulling. This was a shrug. I'm pulling that one. And I'm making it into this instead. This is the start of my kimono cardigan. I didn't think it was long enough. There we go. And that I haven't got very far on it. I got distracted. Kind of went through a stage of just starting projects and starting projects and starting projects <laughs> but I am getting there slowly and surely so pulling from one to make into another and to add so there's that one like I say I will find um, patterns and 
put them in the description box. So there's them. What other? Oh, I've got another one here. Put the blanket there. Now, I have a few friends that are all expecting at the minute. So, I've just found out one of my friends is going to become a grandma. So, I'm making a blanket for her grandbaby. And I am following um, Secret Yarnery pattern for a circle granny. I absolutely love how the centre of this works. It looks like an optical illusion of a flower. Can anybody else see that? So I'm using the colourway Genie. It is a two cake pattern. And I have used one and a bit cakes so far. I have got that much left. So not a lot left, just a little dollop. And I've been working on that slowly but surely on an evening. On some evenings anyway, because on other evenings I am just making lots and lots of little granny squares to sew together. Because, you know, I haven't got anything else to do. <laughs> I'm dropping stuff. Right, so I have been working... Well, not on Nick Rip. <laughs> on my Mayhem and Majesty. I don't know where I last showed. So we shall go from July, August. Yes, we shall go from July, which was a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. And then August, turn it the right way around, was an anchor. I absolutely love that. It's gorgeous thinking of doing some anchor squares and some plain squares in dark like a navy blue and a white and doing nautical blanket for little boy if there's any little boys coming then September was an apple and then October I haven't done yet <laughs> I will possibly start that in the next couple of days because it only takes an hour to make maybe an hour and a half if I'm on a slow day and then I'll only have November and December left to do. So I might start putting them together. Now, I don't know what colour to attach them with. I haven't got the slightest of ideas. I want a plain colour to make the colours of the squares really, really pop. I don't know whether I want black or white or grey. I'm thinking grey. I've got lots and lots of grey. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join them in grey. <laughs> well, that wasn't a very hard choice to make, was it? put that back over there right I have got one more whip to show now this is another project that just keeps getting ripped and redone but I'm hoping I'm gonna have it sussed this time I am using Majestic's Aran if the light doesn't blur that out there we go in black grey and white multi and I have ripped and redone this so many times I don't know what I'm doing anymore <laughs> so this is the first one that I started and it looks so pretty so nice and I'm making two at a time socks I've never done this these ones are resting on my DPNs and these ones are on my needles I'm doing magic glue instead of knitting in the round I don't know why, I always usually do knitting in the round instead of magic loop, but I have got the cuff and about an inch and a half of stockinette done, and I have got the cuff and just a couple of rows of stockinette done on this one. So I got a little bit to go to catch up, but I'm getting there. I'm very proud of myself, and I'm going to try a new type of heel. I've always done um, heel flap and gusset, and I have done short rows. I went and got the pattern for um, fish lip kiss heels. I've probably said that completely wrong. But I'm going to give them a try. And then if and when I am ever brave enough. I might do an afterthought heel. Once I'm a little more confident in making socks. <laughs> so they are living in my little Mario bag. And now they're living on the floor. Because I've just dropped them off my knee. <sighs> We'll get there some, at some point today, guys. 
There we go, put that one back in there. And then when I've actually got some free time, I will work on those <laughs> as and when. So that is all of them. Ah, fluff. Um, like I say, I have been making granny squares, but I will show you them on the next video, which hopefully won't be a month away. So let's get on to some good stuff, guys. I'm going to put these bags back on the arm of my chair so they are out of the way and not on the floor. I am going to move my blanket and oh, this project can sit back under my desk. There we go. Mind the blanket. Now, I have got lots and lots of yarn to show. And the first ones I'm going to show are in this bag at the moment. It looks as though there's absolutely loads and loads, but there isn't that many. There is... Oh, actually, there's ten balls. <laughs> now, I shop in a shop called Lidl. And normally, it's Aldi that do yarn. Lidl got some yarn in. So, I had to get one of each... Well, actually, I got two of each colour. And they're not a little ball of yarn. They're huge. There is 200 grams in this. Yeah, 200 grams. And look at the colour. It's so gorgeous and so squishy. Let's have a look. What does it say? It's Nicole Yarn. Um, the colour number. Um, NI05. Teddy Brab. Teddy bear brown to me. It recommends a five millimeter hook. It ha actually recommends hook and needle, which is nice. Um, Thirty degree wash. Do not bleach. Do not tumble dry. Do not iron. Can be dry cleaned. Where is all the information I'm looking for? French. Aha. Here we go. Nicole Yarn. Uh, extra soft and fluffy machine washable at 30 degree on a delicate cycle includes instructions for knitting a scarf which you have got a barcode somewhere along here to scan uh, 200 grams approximately 340 meters four ply which where's a DK weight I should think a good DK uh, and it is 100% acrylic Uh, materials requirement. Ah, so one ball will make a big scarf. So I got two of the brown. And I'm only going to show you one of each of these colours because I've got two. I got a creamy colour. It's like an, an ecru. Not white, not cream, in the middle. So we've got an ecru. Sorry, my light is proper blowing it out. Even though my curtains are closed and it's as dull as dishwater out there, things still blow out of colour. And then I got two of this gorgeous, gorgeous pink. Now I'm thinking this one, this one, and this one will make a gorgeous winter jumper. I'm thinking a Neapolitan jumper. Which is my favourite ice cream. <laughs> So, that's my idea with those three colours. And then I have got two of this grey. Now, it's a little bit lighter than what my camera is showing. And then I got two of this gorgeous, gorgeous teal colour. Now, it's pretty, no, it's a lot lighter. <laughs> I'm trying to find the true colour. There you go, there's the true colour. It's gorgeous and squishy, and I love it. So I got two of that colour too. But that's not all they have, guys. They also had oop, accessories. Oh, they, it's been labelled as accessories. I only got one accessory, and that was this one. With a gauge, some stitch markers, and uh, row counters. Now, I am losing them, like, no tomorrow. I've got four, and two of them are in here. <laughs> I 
kind of want to use them, but I kind of don't because I don't want to lose them. But they've got crochet hooks, they've got knitting needles, they've got wooden crochet hooks and metal crochet hooks. There was these, they've got packs of scissors, there was absolutely all sorts. And the price, these were only £3.49 for 200 grams of gorgeous squishy yarn. Can't even get that on the high street. Not for 200 grams. Most yarns for 100 grams for a decent yarn are £2.25. And that's how much Stylecraft um, sells for. And this is just as squishy as Stylecraft. I'd say it was on par with Stylecraft. Which is nice. So a nice, cheap, affordable yarn. And a bag full of it. So there's that one. Then I took a few trips into the charity shop. Which, you know, I always do. Mm. So, let's show you what I got from there. In the first bag, because there's a few. <laughs> right. Here we go. <laughs> Partly used. Let me find one that's... There we go. Now, it's a little mangled. It was, like I say, it was in a charity shop. But, all there. It is... King Cole Calypso DK in clear water blue. Oop. There is 306 yards, 280 meters. It's 97% premium acrylic and 3% polyamide. I've got three balls of this, and all three balls cost me £1.50. This alone for one ball is more than £1.50. I think it's £2 odd. It's a bag in, and it's so squishy and I have three balls of this so I'm not sure what I'm going to make with it but I'm sure I can find something so that was the first bag then I went in yesterday and I saw this ball of yarn and it's like oh, I need that ball of yarn I bought that ball of yarn without actually reading it so let me show you how gorgeous is that ball of yarn it is Elise Angora Gold Simli. Um, sorry, I've got to go really careful, guys. You'll see. I'll tell you why in a second. It's 100 grams, 3.53 ounces, 500 meters or 547 yards. Classical brushed. So it's got a halo to it. So pretty. I am absolutely devastated well not devastated but i wish i could have used this it's a 75 percent acrylic 10 percent mohair and 10 percent wool five percent metallic i'm allergic to mohair so i can only touch the label that is as much as i can do i am so upset with myself i didn't read it so yeah it's gonna sit in my stash for a little while <laughs> It says you can wash on a 30 degree, do not bleach, it can be dry cleaned, it can be ironed on cool, do not tumble dry. Recommends some knitting needles, uh, six, uh, three to six, or a two to four millimetre hook, and that is it. But how pretty is that? It would be gorgeous. So I'm going to have a look online to see if I can find some Elise, but not Angara. And not mohair. <laughs> so, there's that one. I can actually touch the bag, so that's okay. <laughs> and then, in another charity shop, I did find this. This is so thick, I can't believe it's... Wow! <laughs> it's like a five. Oh my goodness. It's chunkier than... A chunky <laughs> and I found that much and that much cost me a pound I don't know what I'm gonna make with it I don't know what it is made of I do know it is a Majestics because we have oop, part of a label now I know Majestics do not list what fiber makeup it is um, it feels, feels like cotton, maybe cotton acrylic. There's no wool. It's not scritchy at all. It does feel cotton acrylic. 
So, I don't know. Maybe make some dishcloths out of it. It only came from a charity shop. And my dad always needs dishcloths, and so do I. So I got them. And then there was this sitting in there. King Cole Big Value Double Knitting. So I got that too, in the colourway Charcoal. It is a 100 gram ball. There are 290 metres or 320 yards. Recommends 4 millimetre US 5 knitting needle. It uh, can be machine washed on a 40 degree. Do not iron, do not bleach. It can be tumble dried, cut on cool and can be dry clean. Sorry, I can't remember what the symbol was. <laughs> and that cost me a pound. Bargains. I love charity shopping. And then the other thing I found. Now, I don't know whether to keep this for myself or give it to my little boy. Because he is on a big Harry Potter run at the minute. But I absolutely love it. It is a leather bound journal. And again, I found it in the charity shop. And I paid £1 for it. And it's never been used. But look at that. How amazing is that picture? And that's just the front cover of a journal. Oh, we've got a page. Oh, no. Page just been... Oh, hang on. That's just been folded over. What's that? Oh, wow. And I've just realised... Wow. <laughs> See, I, don't, I really do like Harry Potter myself. And I use journals and books for pretty much anything and everything. And then on the back, there is the Quidditch field. But it is actually a little pocket. So, I don't know. Do I... Because it is brand new. Even though I got it from a charity shop. It is brand new. It's the bit the pages haven't been bent. There's no creases down the spine. And it smells. The smell of a good book. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I will figure it out. So I got that. Next bag. Now these did not come from a charity shop. These did come from Proudfoots. And it is some. Um, Happy sheep in dark grey for a jumper for my nephew for Christmas. So there's M3 and I paid a pound a ball for those. It is one of my go-to cheap affordable acrylic yarns and it is so soft. It's amazing. And then back to my charity shop finds. I have got some King Cole Super Chunky Twist which is going to make a hat. The big chunky yarns I'm going to I'm going to make the Ross hat with. This is a blue twist. It is 100 grams, approximately 80 metres uh, or 87 yards. 100% premium acrylic. Recommends 10 millimetre US 15. So we've got it in blue. But I found it in grey too. So I might just make a chunky cowl. Because I've got two grey and one blue. And it'll make a gorgeous mix. And they've got the same colours running through them. Such pretty, pretty colours. So pretty. So I might make a cowl. Or a scarf. I don't know. I'll figure something. So I got them. And then what I'm going to show you in this bag now was one price. And then I found... Oh yes, I found this. This is so, so soft. I can't believe... I can actually touch it because I thought it was more hair when I looked at that. So you can imagine I picked it up and I'm there and I'm searching. I'm holding it like this. And then the woman in the shop goes, what are you doing? I says, I don't know if it's more hair. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It is 60% nylon, 40% pre premium acrylic, approximately 268 yards or 245 metres per 100 grams. And I've got two. Oh, it's, oh, it's so, it's cloud-like. Oh, you know the saying, I'm on cloud nine? Oh, with the feel of this, I really am. <laughs> I haven't got the slightest of ideas what I'm going to make with it. It's white, so it's not going to be anything for me. I've got children. <laughs> and any parent knows, white and children don't mix. 
<laughs> not when they're above the age of three months. <laughs> but it's so, so soft. I'm thinking maybe a baby cardigan. Or a nice hat and cowl. Ooh, the divine hat. <gasps> the divine hat and cowl. Oh. I think I'm going to make the divine hat and cowl with these. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hey. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm on a bit of a... Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm dropping it all off my knee. Oh, yes. So, one and two. Did I only get two? I should have thought I got three. No. Nope. Yes, I did. Right. I have got three balls of this Robin Crepe DK. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I butchered it. It is 100% acrylic, 267 yards or 245 metres. You can mild wash machine, uh, mild machine wash, do not iron, cool, tumble, dry. Um, and it is 100% acrylic. So I've got three balls of this. It's a little duller. It's not that bright and in your face but the colour is pretty much spot on so I've got three balls of that and they were £1.50 for all three and some of them are mangled <laughs> then we got one two three. I got two of this which is 100% cotton, gassed and mercerised. It is Teddy Sheba Cotton, double knit. Uh, do not, do not iron damp, do not tumble dry. Machine washable on 40 degree, cool iron when dry. It's so soft. And I've got two balls of that. I don't know what I'm going to make with it. <laughs> and I got two balls of pure cotton. There is no colourway. It's that colour. Again, it's like an ecru. Maybe a cream. Maybe it's more of a cream, I think. I got two balls of that. One. No. I got one ball of that. Not two, sorry. I got some Wondersoft Pearl DK by Stylecraft. 100% acrylic, 238 yards or 218 metres in pistachio. And I also got it in fuchsia. How gorgeous do them two colours look together? So pretty. So they're going to go together, but I don't know what. Something floral. And then the last thing I have got hiding is this here, gorgeous pale purple, lilac. Uh, no, we've only got shade colour. It is Wendy Supreme, 100% a luxury cotton DK. The label is here. <laughs> um, there's approximately 201 metres. So before I drop it all, it's all going back in my bag. And the whole of that cost me £10. What a bargain. Whoop. Chucking it all over. So there's that. Let's consolidate some of this. Because I've still got another bag of yarn to show. And then the last lot I've got to show you is this lot. Now, some of these are individually priced. Some of these are altogether priced. Now, this is individual. It is Wendy Aaron with 25% wool. It is 400 grams. We do not have a shared, num uh, shared name, but we do have a number. It's 689. Gorgeous, look, it's already open there so I can show you the true colour of it. So pretty. And it's an iron weight, 400 gram ball of yarn for £1.50. 
I was snatching that up straight away. But hang on. I don't just have one. I've got two. This is different. It is still Aaron. It is exactly the same. 100% uh, acrylic. And oh, no, it's 80% acrylic, 20% wool. I do apologise. There is approximately 800 metres, 874 yards. And it's Robin. <laughs> There isn't a lot of information on these labels, I'm afraid. Um, this is 400 grams, 75% acrylic, 25% wool. How much is there? Ah, it's a guessing game. I don't know how many yards are here. Oh, there we go. Approximately 800 metres. And 800 metres? Exactly the same amount of yarn. But how gorgeous do them two colours look together? Oh! <gasps> Blanket. There's more than enough to do a blanket. And they're both iron weight. And they both wash exactly the same. Mild wash, cold tumble, cold tumble, mild wash. Yep, yeah, they both will go really good together. And again, £1.50. So there's that. Then I got a whole bag. Yeah. Now, let's see if I can... now these are labelled a pound a piece but I didn't pay a pound a piece one two three four five I might have done five pounds for the bag yeah I did pay a pound a piece <laughs> so this is 150 grams per ball so I've got three six seven hundred and fifty grams so that's a sweater con quantity of gorgeous purple yarn <laughs> It's 100% acrylic, 150 grams. Do we have, sorry guys, any idea on, no we do not. It's machine washable, it's jumbo double knitting. Haven't got a clue how many ads are in here. It does not say. Machine wash, 40 degrees, cold rinse, short spin, do not ring. Do not iron, okay. It just says it's 100% acrylic. And I've got a bag full of it. <laughs> so there's them. Then I found these little beauties. They are called Midnight Double Knitting Yarn. There are two 100 gram balls. They are 96% acrylic, 3% lurex, which I'm guessing is the sparkly. And they are a gorgeous midnight blue. I'm thinking... A scarf. It says double knit, but it's quite thick. So it's quite thick to be double knit, but not quite thick enough to be an iron. So I've got two of those. My tummy's on a grumble. It's telling me it's lunchtime or food time anyway. Then I found some of this. Sorry for the crinkling, guys. There is some scraps and a whole ball. It is 50 gram, a 50 gram ball, which is approximately 125 metres. 81% acrylic, 19% polyester. Wash dark colours separately. Keep away from fire, obviously. Ooh, there is a pattern on the reverse of the label. What is the pattern for? It is for... Ooh, a scarf. And it is knitted. I really wish they would put crochet patterns on these. And not just knitting patterns. It would be really nice if they alternated it between knitting and crochet. So, I have a whole ball and some bits. So we'll figure out what we can do with that. Then I found this. Gorgeous little bit of yarn. It's soft. It feels like Karen Simply Soft, but it's too thin to be Karen Simply Soft. It is really thin. And I do believe it's gone dark because it's going to rain again. But look how pretty those colours are. I'm hoping there's going to be enough here to make something baby. Oh, I am sorry, guys. Meeting. There is no meeting today. Sorry, guys. It's uh, work. 
There we go. Right. So we've got that. I'm hoping there's enough to do something with it. <laughs> and then we've got this little bundle here. The purple and the pink are the same kind of yarn. They have like this sparkly white silvery colour going through them you can't really see it on the purple but you can on the pink so they're going to get mixed and then there's this little bit of fluffy white at the bottom and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that but whatever I make it's going to be pretty <laughs> and then the best for last I found these now one's been bald and one has not so let's get this one out and see what it is it's soft it's sparkly I'm by the feel of it, it's got wool. Now, I've never actually had any yarn like this or done like this. Oh, it's so squishy. And this is where Nat finds out it's got something in it she can't touch. <laughs> that would be my luck, no. It's 46% virgin wool, 46% acrylic and 8% polyester. It is a 50 gram ball. Recommends a three, I'm presuming three millimeter hook. Uh, it's called Creative Reflection Print. It's really pretty. I'm trying to find. Yeah, it doesn't say how many. No, I can't find how many grams. Well, not sorry. It's a 50 gram ball. I can't find. Oh, it says 235m. So I'm presuming that's 235 meters. Which is enough to make a nice lacy scarf. And if not quite enough there, I do have more here. And I think that winds up into that. So I think I've got about two balls. So I think I've got about 100 grams. That's a lot, a lot of yarn. And it's thin. It reminds me of um, shawl in a ball, but thinner. <laughs> I do have some shawl in a ball. I haven't used it yet. I can't wait to use it. It's just on my uh, to-do list. <laughs> I am sorry. Pineapple's deciding to have a good old chatter. And now Hilda's joining in. Yes, they're still downstairs. I think they will be staying downstairs. Pineapple. Pineapple. Thank you. <laughs> he has learnt a new trick because I'm back at work now. My dog barks when I leave and then stops. But Pineapple's learnt how to bark. <laughs> of all the things for a budgie to do, <laughs> he does him his imitation of a bark. <laughs> so, obviously this one only cost me pound fifty, But... All of these together also only cost me about two pounds. So what's that five? I think it was ten pounds for the whole bag. I think that's what she'd done. But it is my local charity shop and I do go in there and I purchase yarn all the time. <laughs> she'll just put some out and I'll happen to go in and go, Oh, I like that. And she'll look at me, she goes, You do that to me every time. <laughs> At least it's getting sold. <laughs> so, that is all my yarn. I'm going to have a quick drink of my cup of tea. Mm. Right, I don't think... I have got a gift that I am going to be sending to a friend, which I can't show because I don't know whether she watches my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I will take pictures and if, uh, well, when it gets to her, I will show a picture. If not, you can watch her channel. But I aren't mentioning any names until it's been sent. Because <laughs> it's not sent yet, it is sat down here. Um, that, that's about it for me to show. Now, oh, 45 minutes nearly. Golly gumdrops. I'm just trying to fit, make sure that is everything. I think it is. That's the yarn shown, the projects shown. The only thing I have left to do is give you an update. <laughs> now, 
it's been so long for me being on. Um, the children are back at school. I'm back at work, which means school. And my husband's got a job. So that's left life rather hectic. <laughs> Not enough hours in the day. Um, I've started back up with my driving lessons, which was nice. I was uh, quite happy to start those back up again. Nervous to start those back up again. <laughs> um, before lockdown started, I did get a car in February. And my dad would take me out in it to increase my confidence with driving. Um, and for the first time in six months, I actually drove my car last, not last week, week before. And I took her for a good drive. I was doing really well, came home, packed my car. And then on the Saturday, oh, do it, excuse me. Nope, I got a sneeze. <laughs> on the Saturday, um, I was at home with my children. I pulled my back at work on the Thursday. So I wasn't doing a lot. I was literally just sitting and crocheting and looking after myself. I get a knock on the door. Uh, my neighbour asked if the little blue car up the street was mine. I says, what, the Honda? He goes, yep. I says, yeah, that's my car. He says, you best get some shoes on. Goes out and someone has crashed into my car. <laughs> I can't even drive it properly or on my own. And it's not in the way of anybody. It's quite safe where it is parked. My dad double checked, made sure I wasn't in anybody's way. And a van kindly backs off a drive and straight into my car and didn't report it he just drove off luckily one of my neighbors saw and came and told me it took him five minutes to find out whose car it was so phoned the police told them what had happened they'd found out who it was and got all his details passed them on to me to be able to get in touch with my insurance got in touch with them on the Monday, he still hadn't reported it. Right, okay. So I had to fund his insurance, but because I reported the damage, uh, reported the incident and not him, it was classed as a third party, so it's all roundabouts and going nowhere. Then Wednesday, I get a phone call um, to get all the details of what happened, and he still has not reported the incident. So, at this rate, I'm thinking, well, what's going to happen? I need my car sorting because, well, I can't increase my practice and my confidence if I can't get out in my car. <laughs> um, he has damaged the whole front, and um, is it wheel arch, the part over the wheel? He's caved that right in. He's moved my wheels. I don't know whether my axle's damaged. I don't know whether my suspension's damaged. I haven't touched my car in over a week um, so I'm just waiting on the insurance to get in touch. I did actually email them yesterday to find out whether they'd heard anything. I'm waiting for them to get back in touch. So that's the fun with that. But on a more positive note, um, all my daughter's hospital appointments are starting to come through again for her scoliosis. And finally for all her autistic tests so she can have the help she needs ready for her exams. Now, we did have the appointment set and then lockdown hit. <laughs> so that threw everything off. Uh, she struggled through lockdown. She became depressed because she couldn't. I couldn't get her out. She couldn't, she, her routine changed too much and too quick from going to school every day, do, doing certain things every day in a certain order at a certain time to we not being there. It was a really big knock on my daughter she struggled but now they're back at school it took a little bit of time for her to adjust but she got there and a lot quicker than I thought she's doing really well I think it's because there's routine it's the same day in day out she knows what she's doing she knows what time she needs to do it she's back to how it was before lockdown so she's still struggling a little bit with homework but it's expected she is in year 10 now, so next year she has all her GCSE exams. I'm hoping to get everything put in place so she has the help she needs. She doesn't deal with stress very well. It doesn't just affect her mentally. She doesn't eat. 
she doesn't sleep it really really affects her so i want the help there before so that's all going in the right direction finally <laughs> um so the t the reason i haven't really been on is because i have been helping my dog that's all i can really say it's all i've really done is help my daughter with her mental state and try to help her improve it um obviously supporting jacob as well because he's back at school he's doing absolutely fantastic his behavior's not slipped he's doing really really good i'm so proud of him so so proud so yeah i'm hoping to record again soon <laughs> or sooner um i'm gonna try and get back to doing my weekly videos keep your fingers crossed <laughs> um I'm in a little bit of a better place now that my children are in a better place. So, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we won't have the chunter in next week. Or if we do, it would be at the end of the video and not for much. <laughs> so, yeah, that's about all I've got, I'm afraid, guys. Uh, it's a long one this week. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I should have some more to show again, hopefully, next week. Um, just keep crafting. <laughs> And I can say the crochet and the crafting has helped immensely with me over this difficult time period. It's let, it's helped me to keep my calm, keep my cool and mentally stable. It's helped a lot. Um, for anybody struggling, I'd say craft, whether it's with yarn, with pens and paper, because my daughter draws and that's helped her. Whether it's with um, Legos or Connects, any creative outlet helps. It really does. Um, we are a versatile family. We all like different things, but we all have a creative outlet. And it really does help. Um, it was um, mental health awareness in children at school at the end of last week. And... I thought that was a fantastic idea um, to get children aware that not everybody is all sunshine and rainbows. It's it's not like that for everybody. Some people do struggle, but it's okay to struggle. If you're comfortable asking for help, ask for help. If you're not, find another way to take your mind off stressful situations, um, upset upsetting situations for me yarn has really really helped really really helped <laughs> my living room doesn't kind of agree because it's now full of yarn but i agree <laughs> right and on that note guys i am going to say goodbye and i shall see you all again soon keep making magic and i shall see you soon bye <laughs>